and welcome back to the channel where we talk about only good comics i'm brant and this is friday first this is the series where we talk about those brand new number one issues new story arcs new character debuts for the following week so uh let's get into the books that i talked about last week i haven't gotten a chance to read all of them as a matter of fact i did not even get women of marvel I only read half of Spider-Punk, but I did get to read What If Venom issue number one. So we'll talk about those uh, real quick. And um, I will say this as far as What If Venom goes. I try to stay positive on this channel. I try to only talk about comics I like that I think are good. So I'm going to kind of try to sidestep this one because I didn't love it. And uh, not not hating on it just wasn't for me um didn't really connect with the writing i thought it was a little um what's the word i'm looking for it didn't feel as fleshed out as i hoped it would be and it felt like it was a lot happening in a short amount of time and without a whole lot of reasoning a whole lot of um depth to the storytelling for me and and i wasn't a huge fan of the art style either uh, so don't really have much else to say about what if Venom. So let's move on to the half of the, of the issue of Spider-Punk, uh, arms race that I did read. Uh, I really enjoyed the first half that I read. I think I read about the first like 12 pages or so, maybe 13 or 14, some, somewhere around there. Uh, they had the battle with the lizards and then, uh, the black Panthers showed up and uh they kind of had a little combo and then that's kind of where i cut off so if you read it you know about where i'm at but i enjoyed it uh, i didn't i don't know much about spider punk at all i didn't really know that he had his old his own like little avengers uh that's also a band uh i think that's pretty cool uh it's, and i like the versions of those characters of miss marvel and riot heart and captain anarchy and so forth uh, i thought it was a cool a uh, little grouping and uh their banter was neat i like the the lettering style the way like spider Gwen has its own like type of balloons with the cut off tails and uh the lower the mixed case font and stuff like that well spider punk has like its special caption style with the black captions and red and white text and all that stuff i i love that it feels unique and different and like it's in its own world um and the characterization is different you get enough familiarity with with these characters as a spider-man fan uh but enough variants where it just it doesn't just feel like oh this is just another kind of retelling of a peter parker story because it's not peter parker even at all so i i like it i like it so far what i've read i'm excited to read the rest of it uh it is a uh it's a not a longer book but it, there was a lot of dialogue in it so that's why i haven't had a chance to read all of it yet so i wanted like i didn't want to rush through it i want to sit down and like absorb it um so yeah I, I think i'm gonna enjoy this book though so I, i'm happy about that so that's the two books from last week there wasn't a whole lot of uh new books this week so that's it for uh for those so let's jump into the books that are coming out next week which is a good mix by the way of uh new number one issues of new story arcs uh so it's it's a good little mix so we'll, we'll get into that all right, here we go. First up, we have The Last Mermaid, issue number one. This is from Image Comics. It's a brand new series. Um, it's about a, a, mo a mermaid in this wasteland that the world has become, uh, kind of going back and forth between pockets of water. Uh, there's cybernetic cannibals and mutant beasts and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't really know what to think about this one, but the art inside looked really cool uh very painterly style um so I'm, I'm curious to at least take a look at it and you know we'll, we'll see i i am actually for this book and one other book on on the week the list this week i have added a brand new rating a, a fourth rating that starts with the letter p so i'm gonna give this one a possibly good and that's where it's like okay so you know that i have my potentially good where i i think books have the potential to like really be something special uh, i have my 
promisingly good, which is like there's something about this book that is giving me really good vibes that I, you know, it's going to have to do something. It's going to have to work to turn me off. And then there's the positively good where I can't fathom them not being good. So possibly good is before all of that. It's like, I don't really know enough about this yet to even say it's got potential. I can just say based on like an element, based on a creator or some of the art or just a the concept itself i can say oh it possibly could be good so that's where possibly good is going to come in so now i've got four ratings and uh yeah i, I think that's where i'm going to stop because then i'm going to run out of p words or i'm going to have to think really hard and then it's going to be all like convoluted so we'll, we'll stop there <laughs> and possibly is probably not one that's going to pop up too often um man I, I really need like a, a pop filter on my microphone now because i'm going all these p words are gonna <laughs> give me a lot of feedback there reverb um anyway just just playing but uh yeah possibly good for the last mermaid i really don't know what to expect with this one i just thought the art looked cool next up we have weapon x-men issue number one this is a uh, multiverse of logans that are banding together i believe this is a follow-up to uh oh what was it called i cannot think of what the other one was called it's uh yeah, it was it was the the Phoenix one. Um, I don't was it the Jean Grey one, whatever it was. Anyway, um, it it was the follow up to that one, I believe, is what this is. And uh, this is by Christos Gage and Gilderay Sinar, and it's uh, it's, it, they touted it as action packed and multiversal. There's zombie Wolverine. There's Phoenix involved in this and. Uh, all that good stuff. So I enjoyed the previous one. I know not everybody did. It was kind of like you either liked it or you didn't like it. Nobody like loved it, but I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, and I was excited, you know, for the next part of it. I was a little bummed that it like ended and we, you know, at the time it was like, well, where is it going from here? And then, you know, you learn about this one coming up. So uh, this is the follow up. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there for it. So I'm going to give this one a potentially good uh, because, again, I enjoyed the first one. So hopefully I'll enjoy this one as well. All right. Then we have Venom number 31. This is a new story arc. It's a crossover with Carnage and Venom. Um, I have not been reading Venom and I, I have been reading Carnage, but I haven't been loving it. Uh, so I'm a little kind of iffy on this one so i'm actually going to give this one a possibly good uh you know it's the symbiotes i do love the symbiotes i love them and i love carnage when they're done well i have a lot of uh you know history with these characters but i just i don't know if i'm going to enjoy the crossover when i'm not loving the current runs of the books so i am going to try out at least this first issue of it see what it's all about and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, Dylan Brock is here. We've got, you know, serial killer carnage at play. They're going to clash. And we're going to see what happens with it. So that's all I can say about that. Then we have Birds of Prey number seven. And my rating for this one is going to be controversial with our following over on Comic Book Weekly and, and the rest of the cast as well. Um, but... I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. I'm going to say promisingly good, which is my, you know, next to highest rating. And the reason being is because it's a brand new team, not creative team, same creative team. Kelly Thompson's still writing, uh, but it is a new roster of characters. It's no longer, you know, Harley Quinn and uh, Zealot and that whole, you know, Big Barda, etc. cetera. Uh, we do still have uh, Cassie and we have Batgirl is added to the fray so this is more like classic birds of prey you got you got barbara gordon you got cassie you got black canary and they're on a new mission and so i'm hoping that bringing those characters back together and now that we've got footing under the book it's a it's the second art of the book that it's going to be stronger than the first and i love these characters together i do really enjoy kelly thompson's writing even though the first arc didn't blow me away. I'm still, I got high hopes for this one. So promisingly good for Birds of Prey, issue number seven. And a good jumping on point, I, I suppose. Okay, then we have Ultimate X-Men, issue number one. 
Um, this one I'm hesitant about. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I like Peach Momoko's art, but I don't know that I'm going to like it in an entire book. I, I didn't, I couldn't really get it. I was one of the people that couldn't get into the demon day stuff. Um, it's just, it wasn't for me. And so I I'm worried about a little of a disconnect here as it tries to mess with the rest of the ultimate universe and the art style is going to be completely different. And so I don't really know what to expect with this. We have a new generation of X-Men, uh, Hisako, Ichiki is a teenage girl who just wants to do to live a normal life. Um, and that's a uh, armor. That's her name, right? It's armor. Uh, yeah, armor. It says it right there. So armor, Maystorm, and a group of new Ultimate X-Men, the likes of which you've never seen before, as it says in the closing line there. Um, interesting characters that they're throwing in this as well. Uh, ones that don't get a whole lot of screen time in the main Marvel Universe. Uh, at least not anymore. So... It's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to give this one a potentially good just because I really don't know what to expect with it. But, you know, it's the Ultimate Universe. It's been solid so far. Ultimate Spider-Man's been fantastic. Ultimate Black Panther was decent. Um, so we'll see what what uh, Ultimate X-Men has to offer as well. Here comes another polarizing one. Miss <laughs> Marvel Mutant Menace, number one. Same creative team from the previous Miss Marvel uh, miniseries, um, which was uh, New Mutant, I believe is what it was called. Uh, this is uh, Iman Vellani, who played Miss Marvel, as well as Sabir Perzada. Uh, they are co-writing this, and uh, art by Scott Galuski. And uh, this is the follow-up, direct follow-up to that. In this one, they are exploring whether her hometown will turn on her now that she is known as a mutant and not just, you know, uh, or as just an inhuman now that she's also a mutant and she's wearing the mutant colors, the X on her sleeve and uh, has gone full in and, and the, the overall kind of feeling towards mutants in the current Marvel universe after all the Krakoa stuff and, and Orcus and all that stuff. So um, it's going to explore more of that. I enjoyed, like I said, the first miniseries i know not everybody did uh but i really did and uh so i think i'm gonna enjoy this one as well i do like the creative team behind it so i'm giving this one a promisingly good then we have giant size spider gwen issue number one i'm just gonna put it right out there at the very beginning i'm giving this one a positively good uh this is spinning right out of spider gwen smash so if you've been reading that and enjoying it this is continuing right off of that and uh, telling the rest of the story here. And I've really been enjoying Spider-Gwen Smash. It's the best Spider-Gwen story I've read in a while. So I have no doubt that this one is going to be equally as fun. Mary Jane as, a, you know, a Carnage symbiote um, is, you know, kind of the, the antagonist here. Uh, we got Dr. Octopus's uh, adopted son, Orlando. Uh, is involved in this as well. Um, and then there's a, a reprinting of Spider-Gwen number 13, so which uh, features uh, the Mary Janes and Mysterio. So uh, if you uh, missed that issue and want to check it out, I don't know why they wouldn't just like give us more story, more new story, but there you go. For whatever reason, they put that backup story in there. I don't love it when they do that, uh, but at the same time, the lead story is what I'm there for, and that's the part that I think is going to be really good. So I'm looking forward to this one. Next up, we have the Spectacular Spider-Man number one. This is teaming up Peter Parker and Miles Morales. This is uh, written by Greg Rice uh, Reisman. Yeah, not <laughs> that's not right. Greg Weissman. Uh, I was reading writer after his name, and I it just. Weissman and writer kind of combined on me. I apologize for that. But uh, Greg Weissman uh, with art by Umberto Ramos. So uh, Greg Weissman, you know, veteran writer, wrote a lot of, uh, you know, wrote and like produced a lot of the, uh, the animated stuff, has written a fair amount of comics as well. Umberto Ramos is one of my favorite Spider-Man artists of all time. Uh, I just really love his style. 
And uh, so, yeah, you've got a killer team on this. You've got two fan favorite characters. Um, and I don't know. I, I think it, it I think it's going to be good. It's as this says, the duo is better than dynamic, amazing, sensational, superior. They're spectacular. And hopefully that this book will also be spectacular as the title you know, alludes to. So I am giving this one a promisingly good Um because I, I really think all those elements coming together is going to make for a really good book. But I'm not quite sold on this being absolutely, I you know, I can't deny how good this book's going to be. But my fingers are definitely crossed. So we'll see. And finally, we have Void Rivals issue number seven. After a short break, it is back with a brand new story arc. The second story arc of the series this is part of the Energon universe. Uh, Derek and Solila are uh, stuck in the wastelands. They're they're going through that. Dangers are at every turn. They are being hunted by hunted by Proximus, and I I'm just excited to see what else this world has in store. Um, this part of of the planet that they're stuck on is like no man's land. Nobody goes there. Uh, nobody returns from there. So I'm expecting this world to start to open up and we're going to learn more about it. And uh, maybe some secrets will spill out of this. So I'm really excited about this. I love this series. I love this entire universe that uh, that's, that uh, Skybound and Image has crafted with the Hasbro properties and this unique uh, original property as well. So I'm giving this one a positively good I can't see it being anything but great because I've enjoyed every single issue thus far. And there you have it. That wraps up this edition of Friday First. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help. I hope you have been enjoying all the content on this channel. And of course, if you want to see more, you can hit that subscribe notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And uh, of course, you can follow me across social media at Only Good Comics. And Type in that onlygoodcomics.com to head right back to this YouTube channel so we can talk about only good comics. Until next time, take care. Have a great weekend. Keep reading those comics and I'll see you soon.